Hi, welcome to another edition of Newly Listed on the CSE. I'm your host, Barrington Miller, Director of Issuer Engagement. And today I'm joined by Keith Lee, CFO, and Joel, Fr Joel Friedman, um, <clears throat> CEO. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Barrington. Hello. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for taking the time. And you know, more importantly, thank you for your listing on the, on the CSE and choosing us as your capital markets destination. Now, tell us a little bit about what your company does. Sure, Cor Corcel is a uh, new, you know, newly listed junior mineral exploration company. We have uh, right now a single asset, the Peak property in Vancouver Island uh, in British Columbia. It's currently sitting under some snow, but we did a bit of work before uh, the holidays and we're setting up to do some work later this year. Um, so we're a junior mineral exploration company. You know, we think the CSC is a good home for a, a, uh, a junior early stage explorer like that. I think maybe an interesting differentiator, even just to start off, and we'll probably talk about this over the course of the interview with, with our team, things like that. Um, you know, we have this property. It has previously been explored historically, and, you know, we did some work more recently before listing, uh, and there were some decent uh, results, both in terms of sampling and drilling for some gold and silver, including some decent grades uh, at surface. Um, but I think what's a, a key differentiator, because there are a lot of stories out there like that, is we have a very, very strong team. Uh, here at Corsell, both at the management level uh, and, and importantly at the board level. It's a, a transactional and capital market savvy team. And I think ultimately with the Junior Explore Co, you're, you know, you're betting heavily on both the management as well as the asset. And so I think in this case, you know, we, we've done our IPO. We did some pre-public uh, pre raises. We have a solid team in place to explore the current asset and consider what other opportunities might come up for a company like Corsell. Uh, in another life, I used to work at Dundee Securities, and I would sometimes hang out with the research analysts, especially uh, the ones in mining, because I had an affinity towards uh, nickel and copper. And the one thing uh, they would tell me is management, 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 sort of like real estate, location, location, location. Um, look at the management. If you have a great project, but if you're shaky management, forget it. If you have, an, if you have a bad property, but good management, that is awesome because they'll recognize um, that it's a bad property <laughs> and move on. So um, I, I think that's a, that's a really, really good, um, really good note for those investors who are listening, although we cannot give and do not give investment advice on this show. Um, what, what are you exploring? What are you looking for? And what do you hope to find? Uh, the peak property... Um, the property is mostly explored in the 80s, but there was uh, over a thousand samples taken at that time. There's also about 1,500 meters of drilling. Uh, the property's perspective for both gold and silver. So Corsell, you know, at this stage is, is definitely like an early stage precious metals play. Um, there were some drill holes that had uh, intervals of gold, uh, including one that was high grade is about 17.8 grams per ton gold and 316 grams per ton silver, but it was over about a uh, tenth of a meter. So narrow intervals in, in veins, part of our job, and we're, you know, we're not at the drilling stage yet, is just kind of firm up the property, get a better sense with current exploration methods. We did an airborne magnetic survey about a year, year and a half ago before, as part of our listing process, um, but really get a better handle on what's on the property. We think it's underexplored. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we, we've done a data compilation of historic data, and we're going to set out this year after the winter spring uh, thaws to do some ground uh, sampling, like a, a better sampling uh, program to cover more of the property. And again, the target would be precious metals at this stage. We'll see if there's anything else comes up on the property. And along the lines of, uh, you know, having the management team in place that's capital market savvy, we'd hope to be able to apply that skill set for things like future, not only financings, but also property acquisitions in order to diversify the property portfolio so that we either have multiple commodity exposure or multiple project exposure. We are joined by the by the CFO. Um, how is the balance sheet looking? Uh, what are some of the things that investors should look for or consider when they're looking at a company and uh, looking at some of their financials? Yes. Yeah, so obviously, we're a startup company. Uh, we don't have too many assets uh, on the books, uh, but so right now, uh, our books are fairly clean. Um, you know, we are pretty. Uh, careful in terms of our spending. So we are looking at a company with uh, very little debt in place. Uh, and also like uh, Joel mentioned a bit earlier, we did a uh, IPO race recently. 
So we think that we are healthy enough in terms of our financial positions. Uh, we should have enough, uh, you know, cash to cover all our exploration programs in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. So uh, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Um, and, and this is just sort of more of a, a broader question. When you're when you're looking at a property or looking for um, for a place to do business, what what do you look for? What do you want to see, or what attracts you? What leans you in that direction towards considering um, doing a project? Uh, I guess you know I'm involved with a couple of uh, mineral exploration companies uh, over the last two three years. Um, and I think consistently, you know, the projects we've tended to look for have been mostly have been in Canada, but really, you know, North America, the factors that investors should look for in, in, and that we lo have looked for as a management team are certainly things like stable government. You know, there's all kinds of jurisdictional risk your project could get yanked from you and depending how, how emerging a, an economy uh, your project is in. So stable government is important along those lines, a good mineral recording system. So like Canada and the States, they tend to have pretty good registries or very good registries. So again, you're not, you're not at a risk, you're less risk of title disputes, you know, the government coming in and taking your property. And then in terms of the actual merits of the property itself, um, of course, Canada and uh, US both have jurisdictions that are well known to be favorable to mining overall. So you, you know, you could consider other things both like um, so, like tangible and intangible, like is there physical infrastructure in place to support a property? You know, can you drive to the property? Are there, are there roads? Are there power? Um, you know, are there First Nations issues? That would be more like an intangible. It kind of all has to come together. Some of that speaks to down the road, would a project be economic to, to move into a mine? You know, again, Corsell is, Corsell is early stage, but that's something investors should be considering as like, what's the infrastructure access? What's the political climate? What's the stability of the legal and regulatory regime? Uh, and, and how, if to the extent a property is proven up on a geological level, how likely is it based on things like good infrastructure, access to personnel, access to power, that that project or a deposit could ever even be advanced into a mine stage? So there's, there's kind of a big matrix. And in some extent, yeah, you're looking to management to put the pieces together for what might make an attractive exploration project and future potential. Wow, that is a, <laughs> that's a wonderful answer. And there's, there's so many things that you mentioned that people should consider and should look into. So um, at the end of the day, it's about doing your, your own due diligence, um, just like the company like yours does, does theirs. Now, uh, moving forward, what would investors and newbie investors have to look forward to um, with Corsal, say, in the next 6, 12, or 18 months that, that you're able to disclose? Um, in terms of what we, we put out a press release at the end of the year saying we completed our data compilation, we're still going through the results. Um, that's just the very first step. So, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, runway for doing our current exploration program, as well as looking into other corporate initiatives. Uh, Cause again, we've said that, you know, we look at other alternatives or uh, other assets that could be added to the, the property portfolio that would be beneficial to our shareholders and to diversify the company's asset base. Uh, we're going to run our phase one program over the course of this year. So that's about six to 12 months. As Keith mentioned, you know, we're well financed. We raised 500 grand in an IPO in December. Now uh, we also had money left from being pub, um, private. So we have somewhere around $600,000 in the bank. It's more than enough for the phase one program. It's more than enough for as well corporate overhead and searching for any other properties we might want to add into the portfolio. So I think, you know, the catalysts in the, in the nearest term for the company, we, again, our property is right now is sitting under snow. So we're going to kind of continue to parse through the data compilation, see if we can get any interesting targets out of there for the sampling program that's going to come up. Let's say, give or take in the spring, it, it will be weather dependent, but kind of in that ballpark. And that would be when we really start to get our hands into exploring this property. And so meantime, since we don't want to just sit on our hands, you know, while well, one property you can't get people out on the ground, we're also going to look into other opportunities transactionally that we think would benefit the company, you know, given our current cash position and cap structure. Uh, I think that's also still, again, ties back to, you know, the management team, can they execute on both an exploration program and any acquisition opportunities? And maybe Keith can speak a little bit to just, you know, you've got the management team, most of the management team on the video here, but maybe he can chat a little bit about some of the guys on our a broader management team and the board as well. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, Keith, let's talk about the management team. Yeah, well, management team, as you uh, see right now, is uh, Joe and myself. 
Um, and also ever since I joined the team back in uh, May of 2021, um, you know, the board and the team has been working uh, very closely together. Um, so, you know, everything, uh, uh, I mean, everyone is uh, really aware on uh, in terms of what's happening. Uh, and then Joe, uh, the time I've been working with him, um, you know, everything is really well planned out, well thought out. So, um, you know, it makes it easier to kind of like, you know, uh, you know, have discussions together, talk about, you know, what the company needs to do and talk about some of the initiatives. Uh, because trust me, sometimes like uh, as a CFO, you don't always necessarily get all the information from the operational side. You know, uh, Joe is wonderful in uh, sharing information. So <laughs> keep me up to date in terms of what I need to know as well. Because sometimes like you do need to uh, balance between operations and uh, financials. No, I, I, would, I totally agree with that. And, and it's good to see a young uh, mineral exploration company with such a solid solid base and foundation. I, I, I think it's great. Um, during this, uh, during this pandemic, how has communication been amongst, uh, amongst the group? Like, how have you been able to either talk to people on the ground? And I know snow is, <laughs> is one of the barriers, but we also have a, a global pandemic, which of course can limit travel and, and in-person meetings and stuff like that. How have you managed to make sure you, you, you stay cohesive working as a single unit? <laughs> um, I mean, one of the initiatives actually I take with each company I set up is I, I run a merchant bank called Resurgent Capital. And so we also do tend to build out a number of early stage junior issuers. You know, we help take companies public uh, or we build out public companies ourselves. And I actually set up a WhatsApp group with the board every time right off the bat. And that way on, you know, I can keep them updated on a more frequent basis. It sounds like a little minute thing. But as you speak, you know, as, as you speak to, you want the board and management to have, to have a cohesive vision, to be aligned on the strategy for the company. You don't want to be catching people, especially at the board level as management, you don't want to be catching people off guard with major developments. So you want to be able to keep the board apprised in a timely manner. Uh, I speak to members of the board. I, you know, I send out regular email updates. I give guys calls pretty frequently to keep in touch, especially in the, the heat of our IPO and CSE listing. Um, which, by the way, the CSE handle as well very efficiently. So I you know, have to give kudos to you guys for helping issuers like us get listed. Thank you. <laughs> and we, we didn't pay him to say that. that was <laughs> it's, on true, the it's true. <laughs> um, and then Keith and I are, you know, as, as CEO and CFO, we're most frequently in touch. And then I'll speak quite often with Oliver when we're working through executing the exploration program. And we also have a, a geological consulting firm, Ridgeline Exploration, that we work with as well. So I'm in touch with one of their principals, too, in terms of planning out uh, the exploration work that goes on on the ground on the property, uh, you know, last year, uh, as well as what we're going to set up for this year. The COVID has at times hindered us getting people out to the property. There are various restrictions. Um, a good thing about mineral exploration is actually, interestingly, in a lot of provinces, it's categorized as like an essential service. And so there's, and plus it's outside as well. So really from both a safety perspective and a regulatory or, you know, governmental perspective, there's a bit more latitude to actually be able to get people out to projects, which, which is quite helpful. Oh, that, that's, that's awesome. And uh, to wrap it up, if people need to get a hold of you or to find out more information about Corsell, where should they go? To Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Talk Keith, to Keith. Keith. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've got some confirmation. We've got, sorry, contact information posted on the CSC uh, website under our profile. Uh, you can also check out CDAR for contact info for us. And actually, I've recently moved into the 21st century and set up a, a Twitter account at Ooh. Joel Freudman. So, you know, I'll, certainly I'll be putting this video up there and everyone's welcome to, uh, you know, come follow me on Twitter. I'll be posting about Corsell and other projects and, and just generally things going on in the junior exploration space. So, a lot of ways to reach out to the company. Check out our CSE profile, most likely, and feel free to give us a call or email. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Keith Lee and Joel uh, <clears throat> Freudman from Corsell Exploration, Inc. I've been your host, Barrington Miller. This has been a uh, another edition of Newly Listed. Thank you for joining, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to another Newly Listed on the CSE. Please feel free to hit like and share this content and hit subscribe if you haven't already.